In the last few modules, we introduced the SIP protocol and walked through a call flow that demonstrated typical SIP messaging. This module covers the asterisk configuration for SIP trunk to an ISTP or Internet Telephony Service Provider. We will review the structure and syntax of SIP.conf and discuss key options relative to peer configurations. As with our internal user configurations, this will be a generic example. The options necessary for your trunk may vary. Check with your provider for specific configuration needs. Some providers can offer automatically generated config files that include your account credentials, so you can simply copy and paste into SIP.conf and extensions.conf. However, it's still valuable to understand what these options mean and how they work. We'll cover many of the options available in Asterisk's SIP channel driver in this module. The SIP channel configuration in SIP.conf is divided into a number of discrete sections that logically separate configuration options. These options are expressed as key value pairs, with multiple values for a given key separated by a comma. In the example, host equals dynamic, the key is the word host and its value is the word dynamic. The first configuration section is called general. This is where globally applicable SIP options are set. Among these are the dial plan context for incoming calls, whether to allow unauthenticated calls and unrecognized guest calls, and what addresses or ports you want Asterisk to use for your SIP calls. There are a great many other options that may be set, and we encourage you to read through the sample SIP.conf configuration file to familiarize yourself with them. You will find the comments and examples of configuration broken up into several sections, including various protocol timers, outbound registrations, NAT support, and media handling. It's worth knowing about most of the available options, even though configuring a basic SIP trunk only requires a few of them. Toward the bottom of the sample file are examples of user and peer account sections. We will add a peer configuration for our SIP trunk to our SIP.com file below our user phone configuration. Before we do that, though, we need to add an outbound registration line for our trunk. As you may recall, Asterisk doesn't necessarily always know the IP address of a phone it may try to send calls to. Setting the configuration option, host equals dynamic, tells Asterisk the device will register its IP address by notifying Asterisk when it comes online. The same concept can apply in reverse. Here we want the SIP trunk to be able to send calls to Asterisk, so we need to configure an outbound registration so that we are telling the ITSP how to reach us. An IP address for an Asterisk system is likely to be static, but it's still common to register instead of relying on the address never changing. Before we look at the syntax to cause Asterisk to register with the trunk provider, we want to stress one very important point. The location of the register line in SIP.conf must be below all of the general configuration and above the first user or peer account. You can search for Outbound SIP Registrations in all caps in the default SIP.conf and put your registrations there. If you add a register line below a user or peer definition, it will not work properly. The syntax for a register line begins with register equals greater than. The minimum required options are the username at host. There are other additional options, such as the SIP secret, with the username and secret separated by a colon. You shouldn't have to worry about the other options for now. Your trunk provider may give you the exact syntax to use to register with their system, in which case you can just paste it into your SIP.conf at the proper location. Not all ITSPs will require you to register with them. Some use IP-based authentication, and you have to notify them via their website what IP address your Asterisk server uses. We can now configure our SIP trunk account. Your provider may recommend the peer name, or you may choose it yourself. If you name it yourself, you should know exactly how Asterisk matches incoming calls to a peer. This is covered in the sample in a section titled Naming Devices, but we'll summarize it here. First, Asterisk compares the name in the SIP from header to any SIP.conf entries where type equals user. If no match is found, Asterisk compares the SIP from header to any type equals peer entries. Finally, if there are still no matches, Asterisk checks the IP address and port from which the invite was sent and compares against any type equals peer entries. What this means is that if you're not careful when naming devices, Asterisk might match a call to a device you didn't expect. This is particularly likely when you name your devices after phone numbers. For a bit more about device naming, including a discussion of recommended best practices, see the Device Naming Conventions module in the VoIP Fundamentals chapter. In our example, we've named the peer provider-trunk. If this were an actual account where the provider didn't dictate the peer name, we would change the word provider to the name of the company providing the trunk. 
The first option listed is type. We've set it to peer. This is usually the case for SIP trunks, though some providers will require you to have separate user and peer entries for making and receiving calls. Next, we set the host to send call invites to, and then the authentication credentials. Also listed are from user and from domain, which may be necessary depending on how your provider authenticates calls. Different providers authenticate using different mechanisms. Many providers expect and require that they not be challenged to furnish authentication credentials when delivering a call. To allow this, we set insecure equals invite comma port. The invite portion means that we will allow any invite without challenge, and the port portion means that we don't restrict the port used. You may also configure the trunk to allow or disallow specific codecs. Once you've configured your trunk, you will of course need to issue the SIP reload command on the asterisk CLI to apply your changes. You may also run SIP show peers to see the status of all peers, or SIP show peer followed by the peer name to see detailed information about just one peer. SIP show registry will show our outbound registrations and their status. You can see here the status is currently registered and not rejected due to authentication mismatch. We mentioned several times that different providers have different requirements and expectations for how you configure asterisk to connect with them. In this module, we tried to cover the key principles of SIP trunk configuration and offer a generic example that should apply for most providers. Next, we'll look more closely at how NAT adds complexity to SIP environments and what asterisk can do about it.